PGM 9837 here coming to you from uh, Spanaway, Washington. Uh, a little bit of an update on the, uh, the project and little hobby I have going on here on this piece of property in a suburban area. Um, it's approximately one-third of an acre and the soil is somewhat um, sandy with uh, cobbles from gl glacial um, remnants of the materials. Uh, what I'm trying to do is use the worms, the red wiggler worms, to uh, help compost the uh, food scraps. And then I have uh, the red wigglers, there's a, there's a worm factory, which is a commercially available worm kit for starting your own um, um, composting worms. And then there's, a, there's a tote, two tote bins purchased from a local uh, big box store that I'm using. One of them has perforated holes all the way around and a little drainage hole in the bottom and then it ca catches the the, uh, the leech, which is the worm tea, from the worms. Now what I've been doing is growing, uh, propagating strawberries. I've been finding very good results with uh, worm castings and the worm um, tea with uh, using it on strawberry plants and, and uh, raspberry plants. Here's some uh, strawberry plants that I've uh, I broke these off of the uh, to propagate more, so they're individually in pots now, because they're just spreading all over the place. They're really growing fantastically. And then I have these canes of raspberries that are just coming up on their own from from runners in the ground, which are growing near to my Concord grape mine, and I need to dig those up and plant those in the ground and propagate those as well. And then in the late winter, I will trim them down. Here's the there was a little apple tree in here that I transplanted also. See, the strawberries are starting to get too crowded because they're, they're uh, sending out runners and then the runners will grow a new shoot and that's what I have in those pots there. Let me show you the, uh, the worm castings, the worm project. Here's, the, here's my rain barrel. Now I would highly recommend have an emergency supply of water at your residence if it's just you know, a plastic bottle, fill it with water and keep it in and store it, you know, where it's not going to freeze and it's not going to, you know, leak. And, and so that way you'll have uh, water in case of emergency, you'll be able to flush your toilet. So this is just hand, I wash my hands and gardening tools and pet things in there. What I'm trying to do with a cat uh, feces is I've actually taken some of my red wiggler worms and I put a system of double buckets together and I'm doing an experiment to see whether or not the wig, wet, red wigglers will um, uh, decompose or digest the uh, cat feces. So I screen the cat litter in this here. I know this is disgusting, but this is, this is, not, this is not part of my food growing. This is more of landscaping. So I actually can reuse this. You know, I'll either, you know, it'll dry out. I'll cover it and it'll dry out and I'll be able to reuse it you know, if I ever have to. Um, I keep my soil covered in the winter time. This is the, my, my normal gardening soil. I had been growing um, potatoes in there. I've had good results growing potatoes. They're very easy to grow, simple. Just put them in the ground and they sprout. Got to keep covering them, of course, to when they grow, you keep covering the roots, the, the, the stems. Here's the uh, other strawberry patch and it's just growing leaps and bounds. Uh, pouring the worm, um, tea on the strawberry plants. And then I have my blueberry bushes here. Their leaves are, have turned color and they're falling off. So here's the uh, here's the worms. And what I do is I, I keep a bubbler, which is you can get it in an aquarium store, and it, it aerates the water. So that the, the aerated worm tea that, 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 that drips off of the worm bedding is, is stays, uh, it, it aerates it so that, here's the aquarium pump that I have, and then I, I use this, so there's an air stone in here that, that bubbles, and it just, uh, it, 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 it it causes the microorganisms in there to be more healthy and to uh, replicate so that they they are beneficial um, organisms to the plants. That's what I use on my berries, strawberries, and my fruit trees and in my vegetable garden. Here's the here's the tote. Now 
here's the worm the factory. Now, if you're if you're new at this, get a worm factory. It's pretty straightforward. And then each layer, you just you just take it off and you scrape the the, the, the material off. And you know, I don't even use gloves because I know this is not. There's nothing in here that's that that I can get sick from. So I can just hand I just handle it with my bare hands. I see people out there, they're very they're very they're afraid of getting sick or they're afraid of of contagious diseases or getting an illness from this but I've been using this and it's actually been quite um, benign you know I'm not I'm not I'm not using this on food directly so it doesn't touch any of the food here's the here's the drainage and there's a little spigot on the bottom for the worm factory and then on this tote I just put a little hole in the bottom and there's a tote um, inside of a tote, and, and this t totes inside here has perforations. I drilled, you know, almost a thousand holes all the way around on both sides, and then there's a brick inside of this that, that holds this one, makes this one higher, so the worms can actually crawl up and down, in and out, and go into the water here, or the juice. Here's the worm juice. That's what I use on my strawberries and berry plants. Anyhow, if you're, uh, if you're thinking about gardening, Number one thing to do first is think about soil. And in the beginning you'll have to go to your your local store or nursery and buy bagged soil. Now if you have a, a lot of land, if you have a gardening area, a good gardening area, you can get a metal screen that I use and it's it's about it's it has, you know, it's like a, a diamond metal screen and you, you dig your dirt up and you just throw the dirt on it and put it over a five gallon bucket and, and you sift the rocks and twigs and leaves and weeds out of the dirt and you're left with just the dirt from your your ground your where you live and also look around your neighborhood and talk to people in the area go to people you work with and ask them if they're gardening and what grows good in their area because a lot of times you'll see other people's gardens and they live in a totally different part of the country and the soil's different the temperatures are different so what they what grows good for them may not grow good for you um, so that's Always number one, find out in your area what grows the best and what's most um, prolifically growing in your area. And then once you find that out, you can you can just grow that first to start off with because it's easy. You'll know you'll get food, and then you can you can try different varieties. You can like you know experiment, and 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 then move out from there. But number one is to make soil, and that's why I have the worms because the worms actually. Um, they help break down the the, the 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 food scraps and it's no meat there's no meat milk cheese there's no dairy it's all a vegetable matter so and 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 then I'll put leaves in the fall there's a lot of leaves around so I'll put leaves in the in the late spring late summer I'll pull grass and there's a lot of grass around and I'll and I'll use grass and then I also use telephone books and um, 100% cotton cloth that's uh, that's not contaminated with any oils or any, any petroleum products. Just use you know old cotton T-shirts, old cotton that hasn't been has any chemicals on it or anything you've used it for. Um, also, I use um, the uh, molasses. I'll mix that with rainwater in the worms because if you use faucet water, there might be chlorine and fluoride, in it, and the worms may not like that. The worms may not, you know flourish in, a, in an environment where there's chlorine or bleach in the water so you got to be careful use rainwater that's why you know and as far as the solar goes i'm not really you know I, maybe i'll put it up if my power goes out i don't know but i'm just like it's wet and rainy and i don't have anybody to help me put the panels up so anyhow i'm just you know letting you know what's going on but as far as gardening, get make soil and, and, and don't overwhelm yourself. Start simple. Start with something easy that's simple that you know will grow in your area, and and just have one little pot and have one container and start with that. And then you're on your way to start growing your own food. And then once you you have a good you know, once you have a season with something real basic, something real simple, grow grow a uh, a bean plant. You know, get some pinto beans and soak them in water and grow a bean plant or grow p potatoes or grow um, something easy, a strawberry plant, you know, and just start off with something simple and if you're successful at that then you double it and then double it and double it and double it. Finally one day you'll just like, you won't even have to leave your property, you know, if you have a basic suburban lot you'll have fruit, you'll have vegetables, you'll have um, beans, you'll have everything, just about a lot of your own food, which is 
for me, I like to eat, and I'm mostly vegetarian, so I like flavor, and that's important for me is the, the quality of the food. When you grow your own food, it has a more, a richer flavor to it than store-bought, store because a lot of the times the growers, they only want to grow it for cosmetic. They want it to look good on the shelf for people to buy because they pick the best looking fruit, they pick the best looking hail lettuce, you know. So, but you, when you grow your own, it, it may not look, you know, I mean, it may not look fantastic, but it's going to take, mostly, it, I can almost guarantee you if you're growing your own food properly, that it'll taste better than the food that you just buy off in your supermarket. But start off simple, start off easy, you know, make it uh, an easy thing at first, and then work your way into more and more advanced kinds of growing, you know. And eventually, you know, like, I'm like wanting to get a greenhouse. I want to get, you know, and, and, and figure out a way to compost cat manure. That would be big. And, and you know, hook, finish hooking up my water system because it's not really, you know, I'm, I'm always in the back of my mind thinking, yeah, I might have to move. I might have to leave this area. So if I have to pack up and move, I don't want anything I'm doing, you know, permanently there. I can just easily take it apart package it, put it together, put it away, and move, in the, put it in a moving van. So anyhow, uh, feel free to leave a comment, and thanks for all your support, and good luck with your gardening and your your other projects. If, I'm, if you learn anything from me, that's good. That's great. That's why I do this. Thanks for watching. Bye.